All right, welcome everybody to the show. Uh, that's what we're calling it right now. So uh, some new developments happen in the UFO community. We got the Liberation Times uh, publishing an article written by Lou Elizondo, and I wanted to dive into that today uh, while it's all fresh. So if you wanna talk about it, please do. Um, pop in here, let me know. Uh, this has been kind of a an interesting development in that here we have Lou Elizondo talking about something I didn't think we'd ever hear him say directly. So let's talk about it. Uh, why UFOlogy Must Die is the name of the article. So let's take a look. This is um, very interesting. And so here we got this article. I just read through it and uh, we should take a look. Okay, so why UFOlogy Must Die written by Lou Elizondo. September 5th, 2022. And please guys, while you're here, uh, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. <laughs> get some uh, get some feedback going on in here and feel free to comment. I'll do my best to pop in there and uh, get those going for us, all right? Um, so it's good to see everybody here today. Let's get into this. This is kind of, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm beating around the bush. All right, because so, this is a, this is spicy. Okay, uh, why ufology must die? Yes, that's right. I said it before, and I will say it again. As some people have pointed out, I want ufology as we know it to die. I want to blow it up into a million bits, as is often quoted by my detractors. However, if you only listen to those words that I said and not what followed, then this short article is written for you. Okay. What was equally, if not more important, was what I said following that statement, the part that is usually left out by individuals and personalities who wish to cherry pick my words to weaponize them for the advancement of their own specific narratives. Simply put, the reason I stated I wanted to kill ufology was so that whatever replaces it is something more holistic and harmonized. A community that is far more academically serious and intellectually representative of the topic. Already good, right? Rather than a Wild West approach, I want to instill rigor, discipline, and professionalism into whatever follows. What I want in the utter destruction of ufology as we know it is the growth of something new that is far more academically and scientifically focused. I believe ufology must die, stigma and all, in order for us to advance our understanding into this enigmatic topic. I have often said, both in public and in private, that I want ufology to go away. But in those conversations, I've also explained that I that whatever follows must evolve into something much more comprehensive. Comprehensive, yeah. In the death of ufology, I want a new type of ufology, a better ufology, an invigorated rebirth, like a powerful phoenix rising from the ashes. So he then goes on to kind of really... Um, dive into how things are birthed from destruction and i just gotta say like if you're not reading between these lines of essentially what his goal was and what people are accusing him of then uh it's laid out for you it's laid out the guy's goal was to destroy the the stig the stigma based or stigma laden um ufology built off of uh, speculation popularity and um whatever else right so this idea to keep it all rooted within academics i think is also echoed in his uh, affiliation now with both space force and galileo project um, he's aligning himself with academic groups and scientific groups but but is his goal to destroy ufology is that reflective in his approach with these podcasts TBD, let's keep reading. Uh, and like I said, this is basically about how things grow from destruction or whatever, right? Like, you know, a volcano, Vol volcanic ash is great. Fire is great for a forest, right? Uh, this brings me to my second point, he says, of why ufology must die. Accountability. The behavior of some self-professed ufologists on social media has been far less than productive at times. I can agree with that. I would like to remind the, re the reader that many senior government officials and their staff within our intelligence community and defense apparatus watch social media. 
So we're being watched. Figure it out, okay? Even politicians tune in. And like naughty, this this, this pisses me off. And like naughty children, in a, and I, but before I say, I gotta say, I get where he's coming from, but uh, it's hard to be, it's hard to always have these comparisons of, of children, you know what I mean? And I get it, I get it, but like, not all of us are children, right? But uh, here, here he makes that comparison again. The Ufology Sandbox, unfortunately, has a few naughty children in it, right? Um, uh, I got ahead of myself here. And like naughty children in a sandbox, the actions of a few petulant children can drive away other children who would otherwise genuinely like to play in the sandbox too. So that's, that's true when it comes to children. There's behavior like that, right? Um, the Ufology Sandbox, unfortunately, has a few naughty children in it that have decided that no other children are allowed to play in their sandbox, otherwise risk having sand thrown in their faces. Okay. Yeah. There are people in ufology and UFO Twitter who are definitely uh, cranking out the insults and the things that are trying to say this is all a hoax and shit. And so, the, you know, that idea, I, I get it. No one else can play in it because they were burnt. People who had assumptions about the way it was going to go uh, now had to rethink their assumptions and they got burned. So now they're throwing sand on people's faces. I like that comparison. I like that analogy, but it is, you know, I don't know if he means Twitter, George. Um, like, not sure. Not sure. Uh, yes, though, for, for sure. Okay. So <laughs> from my perspective, oh, wait, let's see. Let's, I don't want to skip ahead too much. This behavior is what drives and feeds the perpetual stigma associated with UFO topic and ufology false, my friend. That's part of it. But it's definitely not the only one. Um, the perpetual stigma associated with UFO topic and ufology is not just here because people don't know how to play nicely. It's here because people make ridiculous claims. And then they try to use the, the science and the study to elevate themselves saying they were you know they're they're they, they inherited some dna from an alien or something or they have some some direct connection to the phenomena and they're here to dictate to us how it goes uh that's not uh maybe you can maybe you can say that's kind of like not playing nice but i think um the stigma comes from people making wild claims and that can't be backed up and then it, it's hard to it's easy to knock down and hard to stand behind. So, you know, this is where I think the science and the academic approach is going to be helpful, helpful here. And uh, so I do see what he's saying. I just disagree with that one statement. Um, now, there's countries, I guess, that are looking forward to this stuff. So that's cool. Um, and then we get to another statement here. Sadly, the UFO community as of late has become somewhat of an irrational morass of mob rule and popularity seekers. Fact. Gone is the respect and decorum. Fact, in favor of mosh pit elbow shoves and boot kicks and boot licks, my friend, and boot licks. So keep keep that in, in mind. Uh, my boy over here, William Bettinger, says, who wrote this? You won't believe it, but our boy Lou did on the 5th of September. That's today. Uh, written by Lou Elizondo. It's not too wild. Um, it's nothing like crazy, but it is here, right? So... Uh, Gone is the respect and decorum in favor of mosh pit elbow shoves and boat and boot licks. Agreed voices of those who would otherwise apply a scholarly focus are being drowned out by those social media personalities sensationalizing their efforts as disclosure activists in order to seek, sorry, in order to generate revenue through viewers and subscribers. Yes, that's exactly what happened. It happened to me. It happened to me. Voices of those who would otherwise apply a scholarly focus are being drowned out by those media personalities sensationalizing their efforts as disclosure activists in order to generate revenue through viewers and subscribers. So I've recently been accused of starting a cult because I run free Twitter spaces. Uh, I've been accused of uh, grifting because I set up a merch store, something that most podcasts have. But these are social media personalities who are relying solely on this stuff, who are not applying an academic focus. They might be applying a some type of journalism or something. I don't know, but it's not really, uh, you know, it, I was, I feel like I, there was an attempt to drown me out and misalign me, which didn't work, um, to stuff because of stuff like this. This is very interesting. Um, 
I will share with you a quote from a friend of mine. Sometimes it's just sheer intellectual arrogance of self-professed ufologists. They're, they too are advocates of consensus reality from their own psychologically defensive perspective. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, you were there when I was going down and that was one of my responses to this, to the, to the claim. Don't you put that evil on me? And I did steal that from uh, Tyler Dickens. This is a Ricky Bobby one. Uh, one of, no, it's not. It's not Ricky Bobby. It's his homie. So that's my bad. But that's the quote, and it's a good time. So, uh, yeah, this is this is really interesting. And I think we're as far as I've read before. So now we're in new territory together. What I believe is needed is a ufology that includes rational-minded individuals from all walks of life with unique perspectives. A ufology that promotes thoughtful study by the scientific and academic communities and by other disciplined researchers. I want a new ufology, minus the drama, the cult of personalities, and the clickbait-driven agendas that lead to a petty backbiting. I want to rip away the decades-old desiccated, listen guys, I didn't graduate, okay? Desiccated and hardened conspiracies and cult, cultish enclaves like tearing off an old scab. Gross, but I get it. I want to heal the infected and oozing. This is getting grosser. I want, geez, let's get it together, Lou. What are we painting the pictures over here for? What are we doing? This is the grossest one so far. I want to heal the infected and oozing wound <laughs> with a steady reg regimen of data-driven Logic, humility, academic rigor, and transparency. Fair. But this oozing stuff, I look. Maybe I'll, if you, I can't wait just to read your book. <laughs> if, it's, if it's got these descriptions in it, this is cracking me up. Uh, uh, Green Street has gone mental. He's abusing Chris Bell on Twitter. What the hell? Okay, this is true. This, <laughs> he's, uh, I'll actually find those tweets. I'll post them up here because it was wild. Wild. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, um, the mental picture, Lou, you can paint them well, but oozing wound? Why do I gotta, why do I gotta think about that? I want a new ufology that is worthy of tackling and technically investigating this incredible topic. Yeah, and with individuals who can exchange ideas without fear of personal attacks, having without having to pick a side, without the middle school drama. So this, is, this was, a, I was accused of this of riding the fence and told that it would told me it was going to burn me in the end because all I'm doing is providing information. I'm not getting any. I'm not I don't hold any secret information or anything. I'm just providing my ideas here. Um, but, you know, trying to uh, tr uh, contribute to the field, at, you know, earnestly with I with real ideas that can be taken down or put up or, you know, whatever. That's a whole thing, you know, and I agree with with what Lou's saying. Um, you don't have to pick a side. There's no sides. This is the most important scientific discovery and topic and field we've ever seen, ever. I'm only 37. I mean, like, think about, think about it. This is like everything. This is the most important anything. Why are we picking sides about personality? Why are we listening to people throw sand at each other? Why aren't we just going for it? And then people wonder why uh, the why people like you know are blocking random users for being so nasty and negative. Well, because they don't want to put up with thousands of people behaving this way. It's much easier to focus and, and streamline your social media to like just the things that, you know, the people that really are providing you with inspiration or or something. You don't have to, your, no one co-ops your own Twitter feed. You can curate however you want to. And no one can just demand that you see them, you know. So there's this, people should be looking. I've seen a lot of people complain about so-and-so blocking them and stuff. It's kind of, a, it, it, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Um, I do want to leave a little bit to the imagination because uh, I like the liberation times. Uh, and I don't want to just kind of hijack the article. Plus, I don't understand um, uh, copyright rules. So we'll see. Uh, but we'll, we'll end it over here. Uh, so do I still want to kill you, Apology? You betcha. <laughs> but it's only because I have a hope and faith that we can all create something much, much better. So fine. Fine. Um, that's cool. Okay, so let me look in the comments. Let me digest this and see where we're at, right? So Avi says, Lou is absolutely right. Cool, cool. Um, we got uh, Red Panda. I disagree with Elizondo. Too many people letting the loud negative cloud be apologized. That's true. Uh, that's true. Like it's, That's why I don't, I, UFology is not gonna die in, uh, in my 
on my watch. I'm sorry. Um, I like the idea of refining it, retuning it or whatever, but I'm not going to call myself a UAPologist. Y'all can, y'all can go somewhere with that shit. So, uh, there is a rich history of good people doing honest research despite the stigma. Absolutely, freaking lutely Absolutely. Those people like those people's legacies shouldn't be erased because of grifters. Yes. Uh, yeah. And they're not going to be. They're not going to be. I think that if we let ufology get transformed this way, then all the people who came before and made efforts are going to be looked at with the stigma. We're going to allow the stigma to stick to um, ufology just as like a scapegoat so that we can apply our, our stuff to someone else and let it just kind of take the blame for all that stuff. And that's not going to work. You'll see the exact same thing propagate. It's just not going to work. People are dicks. Um, people are people. They're going to do what they're going to do. And and just renaming something and moving it on. I mean, look, dude, like maybe in the military or something. I don't know. But I, I think this is kind of goofy. Um, I think outright, you know, ufology is a word and the word contains power to it. And the, the it has a history to it. And so throwing it all, throwing the baby out the bathwater, um, even figuratively, um, just because of the the present presentation of something new is kind of weird. Like, should ufology remain uh, independent kind of thing? Yes. I'm with that. Should a new thing come out, a brand new field of study with a new word and a new official title? Yes, I'm for that too. But I'm not going to let, and I don't want to let ufology just kind of like go to the wayside, collecting the stigma um, and letting the people who were involved in making it shitty uh, absolve themselves from it and say, well, we were just fighting the stigma. We weren't, you know, we, we saw it too. We saw the right, and that's kind of not cool. Because some of these people, these bad actors, these people who are going to sit here and throw sand and, and prevent other people from having a good time because they're not getting it, they're going to move on to something else. They're saying, like, this behavior should be corrected, at the very least called out. And if we let ufology die like that, I think that is a good chance that, um, It'll just absorb the, that blame as well. And people will say and invalidate their, their bitterness and their nastiness and their behavior because they'll say, look, it was, it was bullshit, which I don't think it was. But that's what I, that's what I think. Let's get to some comments. Um, ufology needs to reincarnate to a new form. Everything does. I agree. Everything will and everything should. Uh, um, I can't imagine the current ufology working fine when the topic becomes a mainstream topic. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. It's a fair assessment. I don't, I don't know. It'd be difficult to say. Um, very difficult. We got, uh, it will be a new ology when we learn more and remove the unidentified from the term. I try to come up with a term like neo ufology, neo ufology, like a new form, but it just, it sounds like a freaking bad movie, guys. So I, I haven't come up with the phrase yet, uh, but I'm thinking of one, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, the newbies like UCR, Green Street, Camby, and Goof Up, but these are the, are the doofers <laughs> who should be avoided. I don't know. Everyone's got their own flavor. You like them, you like them. If you want to be, some people, sometimes we go through seasons too of, of, of us. Uh, you know, criticism, you know, maybe in the fall time, you have been more critical, then enjoy it. These people got, I don't know, I can't say if, they're, if there's anything wrong with them personally. I don't follow too much of what they do. Um, uh, I thought UCR was cool. Green Street has points. Uh, Cambian, his hair is pretty sick. Uh, Goofon, never seen him. You know I mean? It's just one of those things where like, there's gotta be something good to, to it. You gotta like, some people like it for some reason, it's not my cup of tea, but I'm not gonna tell nobody to avoid nobody. Um, I guess. I don't know. Maybe eventually. Some might piss me off. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, the children have to stop arguing before they get the truth. <sighs> just because people are acting like ass asses doesn't mean we should call them children because then it elevates ourselves to the parental role. And most of us aren't good parents or, in, you know, we're not, we're not ready for that role, right? We're not ready to be the parental figure amongst a bunch of strangers on Facebook, Twitter. We shouldn't elevate ourselves or putting them down like that. I don't know if they're having, they're acting like kids. They're not playing well with others. I can say that. And some of us do, some of us don't. Um, ufology will evolve seamlessly without having to kill it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. See, that's a, that's a fair, I like that approach versus uh, 
ufology must die i think that's like it's like it reminds me of the last jedi i think that's why i called this the last ufologist all right maybe maybe that's us um chris mellon doesn't deserve the abuse you guys want to dive into that leave a comment if you want me to talk about that i, I will dive into it. it just happened i'll have to comment on it. it's on twitter um and this is partially if not at least a little bit maybe like a little bit of a news brief or something right we're just catching up on the news uh i don't think the data in ufology should be touched but perhaps the personality should be reined in some for show i could see that i could see that um all right so let's see what we're diving into um we got ourselves the Twitter business up in here. Okay, so uh, what was it, Green Street? Green Street and uh, Mellon going back and forth. Here's the deal, okay? Like, it it starts with this post. Uh, when asked about aliens, Chris Mellon, yada, yada. I mean, I guess I can read it. I don't want to breeze over it just too much, whatever. When asked about aliens, uh, Chris Mellon tells a major Spanish newspaper that reports indicate we've already had contact um, and communication with them and that their UFOs have landed and been witnessed by hundreds. So it's a big claim. I guess what's going on is uh, people are, you know, people are busting it out. But here's where the abuse or here's where, the, where it gets weird. Here he mentions this event taking place in uh, I think five days in Spain, where he'll appear at this event, um, and he lists the speakers. One of them is Elite, uh, who will offer guidance from the Galactic Guardians Council. And I guess if Linda Moulton Howe is involved suddenly now, where it's a bad deal. So I'm trying to drag the whole event uh, based on some speakers, and then Christopher Mellon just says, "I'm receiving no compensation." Uh, oh, he also like says it'll be twelve hundred dollars. So that was kind of a thing. So $1,200 for this ticket to go to this event and get a meet, meet and greet. Um, but here he kind of implies um, for $1,200, you can meet and greet him. Here it doesn't say what the rules are, but it kind of implies that Christopher Mellon's charging that much just so people can pop in uh, and, and visit, visit him. And I'm thinking in my head, as soon as I scroll down, I'm like, well, Chris Mellon's kind of rich. Why would he do that? Um, and here he responds, I'm receiving no compensation other than, than airfare and lodging. I was offered the opportunity to speak to people about this issue, which is something that I love to do. I'm following in the footsteps of Harvard's Dr. Loeb, and my presence is not an endorsement of other speakers. Well, bam, cool. And all questions answered at that point, I get exactly what's going on. I don't need to sit here and drill a melon about this. I figured it out. He was honest about it. Um, now the people who really fanboy Green Street are gonna come in here and really kind of lay in a little bit, right? Um, uh, but twelve hundred for the next meet and greet. LOL. If you guys look through these other people's accounts, it's kind of interesting. Um, and then uh, Stephen is just misleading his audience. While I have had no input in their pricing scheme and I am making no money off of it, I do know that the twelve hundred dollar ticket offers a lot more than just a meet and greet. So cool. And then people dove into it and found out that it's 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 hotel and all this other stuff too. It's just like the high end ticket includes a meet and greet with all the people, which is not uncommon for people who host events to create kind of a custom um high-end ticket offer for people and then they want to present those things with like you know with some goodies and stuff so that's the deal but it's the event it's not melon but here uh it just doesn't end the back and forth and then the, the kind of attacks it's just he won't let it drop and he green street doesn't let it drop and then doesn't also like um accept that it, it does nothing to do with christopher melon he just keeps reiterating it and then uh, it, it goes on. You guys can follow it if you want to. I don't want to do a play by play, uh, but it is kind of wild. So that's what someone meant when they commented that Green Street is abusing um, Mellon, which is awful. And I don't know if it's abuse, but it's definitely a disingenuous argument being placed in order to drag somebody's name through the mud and create an, an air where people think that this guy is a scam artist. That's Stephen Greenstreet's motive to out ufology as scam artists only. And that's why I think he's kind of implied here a little bit as a, as a kid who can't play well, who wants to ruin it for other people uh, versus really try and dive in. 
and and Green Street keeps claiming that he hasn't seen any documents or the data and data data. Um, I don't know how to say it. If you're not a scientist, I don't give a shit about your opinion of the data. You're a journalist and a, and a propagandist. It's obvious in the type of content that that Green Street makes that it's propaganda. Anyone who knows anything about media would know that. I've been in media for 12 years. I went to film school. I understand how this shit works. If you watch a Green Street, and this is actually funny, if, you, if Green Street releases a video, you can watch it like a virus grow in the minds of weak-minded people, how they just glue to anything propagandists make. I could also make propaganda. You guys would love, you guys would love it. I could, I could argue any point and I could present it in any way because I know how to edit a goddamn video. And so does this guy, the video producer, Stephen Greenstreet, who has a bone to pick with anyone who believes anything that is in solid mass. So if you watch his work, then you'll also watch the people who don't have, a, who can't make up a decision on their own mind, suddenly be like, I don't know that Green Street people, I don't know, I watched it and now I'm, I'm kind of questioning George Knapp. Well then, you know, you go with the flow of the wind. Wait, and to, and before you voice your opinion, you should watch another hit piece on somebody else and see what else goes. And I said this earlier, you probably, these are the people who watch karate videos and they leave the theater doing karate because they, they're amped, right? They, get, they feel what they're being told to feel. It's propaganda. The kind of stuff is meant. And this is why I think Lou Elizar, I, I understand his anger and his frustration here. Like, blow it up. If they're going to treat it this way, if it's a platform for people to behave this way, I get it. I get the idea to like, let it die, to like, let it like, you know, mm, I get the idea. Um, but that's not it, you know, and I'll, I'll also say this, while I understand that idea, I'm not the one who's out here scanning uh, Twitter in order to find out the, the temperature, to read the temp of everybody's views. I make ideas, I present them here, I present them to people, to other people who are fascinated with the ideas. And in that sense, like, Green Street's never responded to me. He's not in my periphery at all. Uh, so like it doesn't i'm not really focused on the kinds of stuff that you know these kinds of actors and you can just remove them from your list if you don't want to watch them so i suggest you know if you, anything that's kind of going on you could just kind of like curate your own feed but as far as my interaction with ufo twitter I, i've not been um flooded with negativity in a little while because i, I decided to go a specific approach that um was just I, I, i'll just like science and i'll scroll through my feed every morning uh, and if I see something that doesn't have anything to do with, with if it doesn't serve me, I'll just unfollow that person. I do it every, I do it every day. I do it every day. Every day I, I scroll through. As soon as I see something I don't like, check the ship out. You're done. I don't need to see this every day. Um, and it could be a variety of things. I don't block you. I just unfollow you because it's my feed. It's how I want to treat my life, how, my, how I want to treat my day. And then likewise, without having these triggers in my, in my view all day, I'm not, I'm not triggered. To, to react negatively, to think negatively, to feel negatively about the field. So I've only been inundated with really, really solid, positive uh, energy and creativity and, and enthusiasm. Uh, and that's, you know, it's really helped. It's helped me come up with new ideas. It's helped me make art, which I think is one of the, the best signs of something. Um, you know, you're in a good space if you can keep the creativity flowing. Um, so it's just, a, um, you know, it's a different experience for people. And so you can do this. People can do this. It's, it, 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 it's the people who wait for others to dictate how they should do what should they should do and how they should feel about the unknown. Those are the people who are really um, at risk to have a hard time and a bad time and get sand thrown in their face. It's kind of like it is if you want to make the comparison of a schoolyard. You know, there's timid children and then there are very assertive children. There are rude children and there are you know self you know just self focused people. All different kinds of personalities out there on the on the thing. But there is a there is a demographic of people who you know are going to get picked on. There's a demographic of people who you know are going to do the picking. And so it's just, those are truths. You know, people behave differently. There's no one who can come around and say, ah, calm down, everybody, treat everybody nice. There's no one like that. We're adults now. And it's social media. So it's a wild west of this stuff. But like, you know, I guess I digress. It is just uh, a way, if you want to interact, you got to kind of, and it's going to sound kind of dumb, but you got to be the change you want to see. You really do. And with social media, you got to interact the way you want people to interact. And and I've, I've seen different kind of slight posts about the kind of energy I'm bringing, which is I'm not pushing good vibes or anything, but I am. I, I think that 
positive energy begats positive energy. So like you will get what you put out. And if all you're doing is criticizing, making people angry, coming up with volatile posts, inst in instigating arguments, being short tempered and also short sighted, like doing these things, trolling, just to be like, oh, I'll just mess with you. And, and you were on your lunch break and just trying to cause trouble. Like, bro, like that's what we're talking about. You know, there's, you know, like there's a different, you're going to get that stuff back. You're creating problems where there shouldn't have been a problem. So you really need to think about if that's how you're spending your day, why wouldn't that come back to you? So just, you know, word of advice here. Like, I don't like being talked to like I'm a kid. Um, and at the same time, I don't like being associated with people who act like that, uh, who act like kids. So I've, you know, I've been in spaces and I've left because people are being wild. Uh, but try not, you know, try to remember that this is your, it's your view. It's your view of the world. And people who have been watching UFO Twitter have this view of us, that we're kids, because we can't. Some people can't maintain a conversation respectfully. So we should really pay attention to that. Create, you know, that's why I make the spaces I make, so that we can all engage in a conversation respectfully and like keep coming back and knowing what to expect. You know, that there's a level of respect here. There's a decorum here. And that's what I've been um, complimented on the most as a host and a, a, a curator of kind of this kind of like conversations is like, you know, there's a decorum involved, right, uh, in it. And that's good. It's a, it's a good thing. You know, you shouldn't be able to come into a space or a room and just drop nukes of doubt and anger and 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 seed all these weird plant like like these weird things that you're gonna like watch unfold later on like oh I'm, I'm just asking questions like no you're not so like you know so it's a it's a it's a different definite thing um to watch out for and to be mindful of um because it's out there but this is how we're being viewed um Lou Elizondo is the leader, if not one of the highest leaders of the official UFO disclosure effort. I make videos on him all the, you know, I did. I made a lot of videos on the stuff that he said. Um, so for him to come out and say UFOlogy must die, um, at the very least, we should take that as a critique of, of our uh, overall vibe. It's not good. It's not good. So yeah, um, avoid the, the frustrations and things that get you kind of worked up and focus on the science, focus on the academic aspect of this phenomena. I've been trying to do that too, and it's really been fun. Like I, and getting to talk about ideas and what ifs and philosophy is like, not what's being described here, but that's what I do. Uh, Mike from Mind Escape Podcast, you guys should follow. Uh, Alexi, Lucius, uh, Lucius Labs, you should follow. These are people who like, know how to engage in a conversation uh daniel jones um and there are some great podcasts out there too if you follow me ask me on twitter i'll leave you a list of, of podcasts i think are really cool who kind of focus on this who allow people with the science to talk um and yeah if we can uh, uh it's not a goal of mine right to get lou elizondo back into the fold of traditional ufology uh if he wants to let it die that's totally fine um but it is it, it is something that i'll say you know, you'll have to work really hard to, to get that because I like it. I think it's a really cool thing. Um, and I think it, it does represent the grassroots approach to studying the phenomena and that there should just be a higher level um, set up so that people can graduate from ufology into something else uh, and, and maybe take this experience and take this uh, study and take this, take this field and do with it, right, something good. And, and really apply it to this academic level because I agree that it's not really presented yet uh, in the in the grassroots field this idea of academics or scientific rigor and stuff. But I do think that um, there's a thirst for it. So maybe Lou, if instead of blowing up ufology, you created a higher tier of ufology, um, that would be better and that would be cool. So that's my suggestion. I just came up with it on the spot. I didn't rehearse this video. I just popped it out there. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video with friends. Um, I hope you guys, I hope we went over it. And I hope I left enough to the imagination to go through, visit Liberation Times, read this article yourself, retweet it, um, do whatever you gotta do. Show some love over there to these guys who are out there really hooking it up. Uh, Christopher Sharp, much love to you. 
uh, much love to everybody who was in the comments. Uh, Red Panda Koala, I see Jared in here, everybody, Coin Exchange, you guys are great. And uh, yeah, until next time or until the next wild statement, I guess, you know what I mean? I'll be around. Uh, take care. And I'll see you guys in the Twitter sphere and just look out for the new videos and stuff. Thanks, guys.